Should I trade in my coveralls, give up the mechanics, and just do cooking? Maybe an idea, right? So today, we're going to do something that I think anybody uh, would enjoy, and this is going to be bacon jam. We want this to go into a cold pan. You should do that with all bacon anyways. And we're going to cook this up and we're going to render as much of the fat out of it as we can. We want this to be reasonably crispy. Now I don't like very, very crispy bacon personally, but we're going to need to get it fairly crispy anyways. So we have not turned this pan on. It's not preheated. What we will do is put our bacon in there. And that's just my basically seasoned cast iron pan, nothing fancy. Okay, we're going to turn this on to a medium heat, at least to start. We don't want to cook it too quickly initially because we want it to render out. So we, if you turn it on too hot too soon, um, you know, it'll crispy up and it'll, it could even burn before you actually get the fat rendered out of it. So, and don't worry about the bacon fat. There's, there's a purpose for that in a few minutes. You'll find out. So, as you can see, that's starting to get quite watery. That's fine, as we know, if we ever make beef jerky for sure, that there's quite a lot of moisture in meat. So, that will slowly bring the moisture out of that meat. Uh, that will start to evaporate off, and the, oil, uh, the fats will start to render out. And that's what we're going to look for. So, this has been going for, uh, I don't know, maybe eight or ten minutes now as you can see it's starting to there's still some down here but it's starting to dry out a little bit the moisture is evaporating away um, as it starts to cook up now and starts to render the fat it will be a lot easier to separate the individual little bits of bacon as you can see here the uh, the liquidy content in here is now becoming more fat um, it's it's still quite clear at this point. The water has mostly evaporated off. We're starting to really render the, the fat off of it now. Um, as this cooks on, we want to get it, as I said, quite crispy. The fat itself will start to become similar in color to the meat. Hard to tell with a, with a cast iron pan because it's black. But uh, Now what we're doing here also is we're creating basically the mothership recipe. What that means is that there are so many different ways to eat this that there are equally that many ways to, to flavor it, I suppose. So this is your basic mothership recipe. Um, once this is done, you can... Now, I personally like it kind of savory. So once this is done, you can either make it more savory. You can put a little cayenne pepper in it. Um, you could put a little chili pepper in it, things like that. Um, if you were going to use it, uh, for example, in a, in a meal where it might be breakfast or something, you might put a little maple syrup in it. Definitely, that's awesome. Uh, bacon and maple syrup, I mean, honestly, it, how much better could it get, right? So, what we're doing here is you're going to have to experiment for yourself. I'm, I'm going to keep the onions. The onions normally would be um, caramelized, very caramelized, really quite browned. And again, that makes them sweet. That's the, That brownness is the sugar cooking out of the onion. I'm going to caramelize mine, but lightly, because again, I like more the savory onion flavor, somewhat less of the sweet flavor. We are going to put a small amount of brown sugar in here, so we are still going to get that jammy, sticky consistency. If you look at them, there's still a fair bit of fat on there, and I want the bacon a little crisper than that, but it's not the crispiness so much we're looking for as to get more and more and more of that fat off. It's hard to tell with it foaming up like this, but there's still a fair bit of fat sitting on these pieces of bacon. But at this point, you don't want to walk away and leave this. You want to keep a close eye on it. Okay, we're getting very, very close here. I think that's rendered off pretty much all the fat there is. I've turned the temperature down here on the uh, oven fairly low. I don't want the fat to start to congeal again. While we're letting that just sit there and stay warm, we'll start draining it shortly. I'm going to take a large onion and I'm going to start slicing and dicing him. You want 
want it reasonably fine because you know remember we're making a essentially a jam here so we want it to be um, you know fairly fine we don't want it too chunky and I did wash the board since I used it previously for the meat and I did wash the cleaver actually I touched the cleaver up with the steel a little bit because it was uh, it didn't do too good a job going through that basin so now let's let's just set that for a moment pour this off we are going to want about a tablespoon of that oil left in the pan in order to uh, start to saute our onions. So I've tossed the onions in here, they have just, just put them in here now. And uh, as I think I mentioned earlier, normally a lot of people would saute these onions, caramelize them, not really saute them, but actually caramelize them fairly heavily and get them so that they were quite brown. Uh, and bring out the sugar in them because that's that's what the brown is is the sugar cooking up in the onion I tend to like I'm not a sweet tooth I like things a little less sweet and a little more savory so I'm going to caramelize them for sure but not quite to the extent that that might be done by other people we'll come back here shortly and uh, we'll give this a couple minutes and then we'll come back shortly and uh, we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients okay so we're pretty much ready the onions are starting to, to get that light brown caramelizing. Um, actually, the basic recipe that I got was from Stacy Lynn Harris. And since then, um, I've modified it to my own taste. So, I'll just get that. I'm not going to get too carried away with this. I don't want it crumbs. If you could smell this, how many times have everybody that does these things said if they could have smell a vision? If ever that was possible, this would be the time. Onions, bacon, I mean, how much better can it get? This is where you can start to get a little bit creative to your own personal taste. So I'm going to move the camera over a little bit here. But we want to put basically a quarter of a cup of brown sugar in here. Now this is where you also want to decide what you're going to use this for. If it's a breakfast item, um, I'll tell you one real great way to do this is to do um, a breakfast burrito, scramble up some eggs, get a, uh, you know, some, with some peppers and whatever, some onions, some mushrooms and so on, get a wrap, put the thing in the wraps, put a little of this on top of it, uh, oh man, get myself all excited here. Okay, uh, here, let me reach behind the camera. Now here is um, apple cider vinegar. You can use a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar, or you could use a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar, or you could use a combination of the two as long as it's only a quarter of a cup. I'm just going to use this at the moment. I'm going to pour that in. Oh man, boys, this is. <coughs> Woo -hoo! Damn, that's good. At this point, we're just simmering the flavors together, we're not actually doing any more cooking. In addition to that, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to put in uh, a quarter of a cup, I probably won't measure this, but uh, grained mustard, a whole grain mustard. So I'm not really good at measuring. I'm probably not going to put a whole quarter cup in here either. Again, that's just a personal thing. So we got that in there. Now, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne. This is a little bit where my flavors come into it. Cayenne. I like that. So that's a that's a good quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne. Actually that's probably a little heavy on that amount of stuff. We'll go just a little bit lighter. I do this by, I don't really do things by measure all that much. Um, we'll put in a little bit of thyme. I'm going to put in I'm going to use the quarter teaspoon. I'm going to put it about half of it. I'm, I'm not wanting to put too, too much of that in there. Let's get this mixed up. Oh gosh, this is looking really good. Okay, now this is looking real good. 
You can see it's getting that sticky, jammy sort of a consistency that we want. Just let that warm up. Now there's a, one more thing that we put in here. And uh, again, this is going to be what I have. This would normally be made with a uh, quarter of a cup of bourbon. I don't have bourbon. I probably never have bourbon. But I do have a little bit of rum. So we just pour the rum in. And we're going to let that just lightly, lightly simmer away. That's just going to bring the, some of the alcohol out of it. But it's going to leave the flavor. One last ingredient. No particular order. One last ingredient is a quarter of a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I also very, very much like chipotle. Definitely a little hotter flavor, but mm, man, it's good, good, good. We're just going to give this two or three minutes to just absorb that last little bit of moisture. As soon as that's absorbed that slight wetness, it's ready to go into a jar. Okay, as you can see we're getting that nice thick jamminess. That's basically bacon jam and like a lot of things, stews and chilies and soups, the flavors blend on this. It's often better the next day than it is uh, right now. You can put this in a sealed container, you can put it in your refrigerator and you can keep it there for two to three weeks. Having said that, I also have to say that anybody who makes this and puts it into a container and puts it in the refrigerator and still has any left two to three weeks from now, you're in the wrong spot. You should take up golf or something because that's wrong. It's just not not right to have that happen. So there it is. It does get very thick consistency when it's in the fridge and it should be served at room temperature. So if you're going to serve it or use it in a recipe or whatever, bring it out of the fridge a little while ahead of time and let it come up to room temperature. I have a piece of nice fresh baked crusty bread. I'll just take a little bit and spread this on here. Oh man. Wow. I mean, bacon jam. Just <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's got some kick to it. Nice. Oh my god. joining me on uh, this which is the third episode of the cast iron chef uh, the first episode was several months ago it was taken in the hunt shack trailer um, where I did beaver stew and then again um, at the cabin about a month ago we did a pot of beans and now we've done bacon jam so if you enjoyed it please like it Share it with somebody else who you think might enjoy it. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing any more. And uh, everybody have a great week. We'll see you all the next time. Mm. Mm. Well, that's good.